not this much down. Yeah. Okay, got it. Uh, yeah, welcome. As I said, this is bonus points. 35 degrees and you're here. This is really highly appreciated. Uh, very good. How are you guys? Okay. Good. Uh, me too. Very excited. We have a very special guest with us today. So uh, welcome again to our bi-weekly Monday evening event, uh, the juxtaposition lecture series here, in which, in which we are pushing like, the envelope of what it means to be a cultural producer in the widest sense of the word. And um, I would like, as always, um, to thank you for all of your feedback and your reflections on the talk by Ute Meta Bauer two weeks ago. And I want to apologize to, um, because many of you asked why the talk was not online. It is online since today. As of today, it's online, but it wasn't. That was an internal mistake on our side. So if you haven't watched it or you weren't there and you still want to write your reflections, you can still do that. It's, it's online now. And we'll make sure that this one uh, will be online soon as well. But um, that said, um, it was beautiful to see your re reactions on Ute's talk. And as you know, Ute was very special and very personal to me because she's been really a mentor, mentoring figure in my own kind of professional career. And I kind of felt that a lot of things that she, how she touched me, she also touched you. And that was beautiful to see. In particular, her like modesty and kind of humility of, of presenting and also the, the passion and somehow this kind of empowering moment that she represented it. So I tried to, to cluster a little bit the feedback, and I had to edit it massively, but still quite a bit. Um, obviously, since that was kind of the topic of her talk, um, the idea of the collective or collective production was what resonated most with you. Um, for example, Alma, I'm not sure if you're in the room today, um, you um, kind of also said that the part that stick the most was the talk about the collective and the work coming from it. And um, also, um, uh, you stressed, and I really like this, the importance um, of students working together in the same space at all times, because this is where the collective is created. And that's very true. I think, Alma, I don't know if you're here or not, but this you said in reference also to the university in Vienna, where you studied before. Jan is Lisa. Kind of, if I name, name it and you're here, you can raise your hand. Uh, otherwise, fine. Um, realization was that it's not so much about the time you have available, but rather the exchange with others. Or, as Ute said, to collaborate, you can push something great in you, even though it's a challenge. And Signe, um, following, following up with another quote by Ute on the topic, um, when you don't know what to do, be together with other people, with other artists. And Larissa, such a huge community that's online here, uh, by the way, it's interesting, uh, also agrees to Ute's point that instead of being so competitive, we should focus on working together. I quote her now, bringing different talents together can only make the project better and, and uh, everybody ben ben benefits from it. And also to you, Larissa, yes, you don't need to become a lonely designer sitting all day in front of your computer. Mm. And then Astrid and a few others, they were also very inspired by, uh, by Ute's talk and the works in collectives, but also um, um, were questioning also the limits of it, that kind of the experience of working in a collaborative process or working in a collective is also quite a straining process. And sometimes you feel like you actually give more energy to the project that you eventually get out of it. And uh, I think um, uh, Ute kind of showed a way of kind of persistence, of just kind of staying with it. And it's also something, and I think that's um, what, yeah, Sophie Charlotte, are you here? Sophie Char Charlotte stressed like the soft skills that you have to develop and you have to actually learn them to work together with others. It's not something that you just know how to do it. So collaboration really means also putting effort into it and developing a more like fluid skill of, of, of exchanging ideas of being able also to change your standpoint. And I think this is something that kind of um, yeah, triggered a lot of thoughts in many of you. And then the notion of space. It's interesting because Ute, as she told you, is a trained stage designer. So her way of curating is always starting also with the space, not as a topic only, but also as the topos, as the place actually of, of working on it. Um, Janne. Um, said, I really understood her approach to art as a space provider. 
Um, and that feeling good in a space or feeling free in a space or connect with people in a space is an art form already. Louise said her talk revealed a lot of inspiring thoughts in which I could, I could relate as I felt her sensitiveness on space and social interaction. I think a lot of other architect students or stage designers could relate to her way of thinking. And Anton Hermes uh, pointed out uh, Ute's mentioning of the importance, and it's quite nice, of unstructured spaces for cultural production and the need for these kind of unstructured spaces. Um, and Celia, are you here? Then also online, that also stuck with you, because um, it seems to be lacking in your studies, these kind of unstructured spaces. And I think that's something that actually a university also has to provide. Obviously a structure that's given, but also these places that are not defined, no? that kind of are actually totally open and free and might be complete failure, but I think the, um, to allow failure also in spaces is quite important. And then the empowerment. That's the next uh, cluster um, with regard to Ute. Uh, Eike, are you here? Are you guys all super shy and you're really not in the room or are they all online? It's like they're literally all online. Okay. So, uh, um, Eike said, Ute Meta Bauer made me feel very empowered as a woman that she has done um, and is doing so many things was extremely inspiring. It felt as if such a cool woman with so much presence and such a sympathetic way of being that the art world doesn't really have to be full of these snobby people that I'm afraid of. It was really deeply refreshing to see her. Thank you. And that's true. So that's, um, I always say there's assholes and there's not assholes. As simple as that. In the art world, in the music world, in any world, there's just stupid people and they're nice people. And you, I can recommend you stay with the nice people because they are, they are around. You can fuck the assholes. Um, Janne, uh, you're not here, I think. Uh, but anyways, I was happy to read. Uh, you said, I'm so happy um, because uh, juxtaposition has really become a comforting and nice part of my studies at the UDK. Um, and like Ute mentioned, it's a really good occasion to keep writing, kind of to keep this weekly or bi-weekly exercise of writing. No, no, it's, for me, it's beautiful to read. And I'm reading snippets. It's like long pieces that I'm getting there, actually. Emma, are you here? No. Okay, Emma was tired when she came here last week, um, but then um, really kind of was revived by Ute's presence. Um, and she said, I quote her, what I enjoyed the most was when she talked about self-determination. I liked that she was able to formulate so well how beautiful but hard it is to be an artist, how you need to motivate yourself every single day, and that nobody really talks about that type of emotional challenge. And it was also nice to see that she studied art, but still ended up doing something different that she had initially planned. It shows you that you can always reinvent yourself or choose a different passion. It was definitely very, it was definitely very reassuring. Um, there's a lot of more positive feedback here, and then maybe I kind of wrap this up a little bit. But uh, art and the social power of art was also something that stuck um, really after Ute's talk. Um, Lea Margareta, no, <laughs> not here either. Um, she um, said, something that stuck with me from the uh, lecture by curator Ute Medabauer is the extent of what art can be. This is why I highly appreciate Medabauer's attempt to transform social infrastructure through art, since sometimes art isn't just a fancy event where you look at expensive pictures. It is a basic need for humans to exchange grow, understand, and unite. Or, like Ute Meta Bauer said, art and social reforms are inseparable. Luca, are you here? Said, um, Ute Meta Bauer's second name was Program here. Her lecture led me into a kind of meta verse. It was a whole new business, a whole new world for me to realize how she combines technology and art and puts students, curators, as she is herself, artists and connoisseurs into one room in Southeast Asia to form the world of contemporary art. Before her insights, I had no clue what the job of a curator is. Now it has given me a whole new perspective on what art can also be. And art is not just about creating. Many, many more. And now to the um, artworks that I received. Um, Bill, it's incredible to see your digital garden grow. Many thanks for sharing the process. 
Aobo Dai did a research on the pavilion, the Singapore pavilion that Ute curated at this year's Venice Biennale and shared the reflections. Rami, after the conversation with Ute, you were thinking of an abstract painting of actually a Sufi whirling dance and shared that picture with me. Thank you so much for that. Bianca, thank you for the typo poster. David Leon, again from the sketches. Julius, are you here? Thank you for the, uh, he, I think you did that last time already and I really like it. Thank you for the screenshots of your Google searches inspired by Uta's lecture that went from how can I learn to enjoy writing to, um, I don't know why, we go to jail here and there to hanging out. And then I wasn't sure if it was a joke or not. Um, as a song, you had Kelly Clarkson's Don't Waste Your Time. I put it on the playlist and I actually took it away from the playlist again. So please let me know if that was for real or not. Uh, and then I really love the photo of this kind of collage painting installation, Julius, wherever you are, that you sent along. I was wondering if it was yours, and if so, I'd like to learn more about it. And then Diego, this was very nice, um, it was a longer PDF called In Favor of Loitering or the Epistemis, Epistemology, oh God, now I forgot, of Informality. And it was an instant message chat or like a, um, like a verbal ping pong on topics such as place and time and mind, oikos, very interesting by the way. Um, are you here by the way, Diego? Diego, Diego, Diego. Uh, oikos, uh, the Greek word of house, but it's also where the term economy comes from. So economy is just a well-kept household. So anyways, oikos, um, from there we went to herbs, civitas, techne, agora, city planning, delirious New York, loitering, Tyler the Creator, Agorasian, a um, hip hop group from Madrid, C. Tangana, Viennese Cafe Culture, Spetis, and the Mensa Gang. And Agnes and Anton, are you here? So, Agnes and Anton, um, you sent me two images um, without further explanations, and I think they would be needed. I didn't really get that. And Niels Ruben, I think I said it last time, your PDFs are still corrupted. I cannot open them. Niels Ruben, if you're here online, please do let me know. And um, inspired by all of this, um, and because last time one of you um, came up to me, I would like to change the seminar next semester to um, a lecture series slash workshop, where we do it weekly, and one week is a lecture, and the other week actually work together as a seminar, because there's so much beautiful input that I'm receiving every week, and I'm reading it, but I can't show you the images, I can't show you the films, etc. And I think um, that's also something that I'm missing uh, this semester is, yes, I'd love to be with you, but we have, let's say, a, a limited amount of interaction, you know, because you're listening to talks, and that's inspiring, and we can communicate like this. But next semester, it will be uh, offering both this lecture series on a bi-weekly um, rhythm and a bi-weekly rhythm than actually a seminar where we kind of work together. And that is very much inspired by you guys, so thank you for that. Enough said, however, um, you get an idea of who was here before uh, you, Dina. Um, I am uh, very excited and thrilled to have you with us, Dina uh, Kaiser Frimut. We met last autumn in uh, Istanbul because we both went for the opening of a common friend who's also a visiting professor here at the uh, UDK at Art in uh, Context, Ahmed Ulgut. And um, yeah, we shared, I think, uh, the Airbnb for, uh, for, one, uh, for, uh, for one weekend. And I was very intrigued in meeting you, and I was very intrigued also by your work. And now you're here for the Juxtaposition Lecture Series. Um, you live and work in Berlin and Copenhagen. You are mm, critical and also collective, so you're picking up a lot of threads from last week um, today. Artistic practice unpacks um, the complexity of yeah, collectivity and also of belonging. Actually, where are we from? Where do we belong to? And it very much questions all kinds of categories, whether it's gender or ethnicity or class. And um, thereby, um, your work or your practice often revolves around creating spaces. We're coming actually again back to last uh, week's uh, lecture, or let's say environments, um, environments for dialogue or conversational environments, uh, centering around queer and often non-white voices and decolonial and institutional critique. You are uh, 
activist practice often emerges in collaboration with other cultural practitioners. It includes curatorial projects, text, performances and video works. You're also co-founder of the artist collective FCNN, the feminist collective with no name, and DNA, together with Anita Belkua and Neda Sanae. You exhibited at the Levens Berlin Biennale, at the 1-1 in Basel, the Bergen Kunsthal, the 5511 uh, Gallery in New York. And last year, you had your first institutional solo show, uh, entitled No History at All, at Overgarden Institute for Contemporary Art in Copenhagen. Um, thank you so much for being here. I'm very excited about your lecture. And a warm applause for Dina. Oh. I hope this works. Yes, it does. It sounds like it. Thank you so much, Lucas, um, for the kind introduction and also for inviting me here. Um, yeah, and super interesting to hear that already last year you were talking about collectives and what, what kind of a practice that is. So I, I feel I have a good introduction. Um, <coughs> so what, uh, what I'm going to show or talk about today, I mean, it's in general my practice, um, which... Darf ich einmal yeah. ganz sorry, I was just told by the technical okay. team, I'm sorry, I will help. Did I? Tech team? It's okay. better? Sorry Sounds for interrupting. Better? It should just point at the mouse. Ah, okay, not at me. Okay. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, so I think that um, also because we are here now at the university and um, I mean, I've, yeah, I also been studying here and then I've been studying in Copenhagen. So it's also why I have a, I have a lot of connections to Copenhagen and exhibited there. Um, yeah, so I think that what I thought was, uh, was meaningful today was just to, to go a little bit through what happened like after I studied and what like because that's not actually so long time ago. Um, so <coughs> I wanted to, and I, and I think, I have a feeling of that I didn't went the, the exactly like the most traditional way um, after I graduated. Um, yeah, so I thought I'm just gonna like walk you through what happened, what kind of projects I did, and, uh, and then maybe I'm gonna have time also to land on what I'm doing right now. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna start with, <coughs> here in the background we have, uh, <laughs> I just put this on in the background because I really, I think this is like one of the, I don't know, just like, I really work a lot with, uh, with kind of statements or attitudes um, or I don't know if it's like ideologies or something, um, just to also, s some that are also kind of like simple um, and to make sense also to say collectively. This work you see here is from, uh, from DNA. Um, it was exhibited in London on the streets. Um, it was like um, Gasworks in London made an exhibition outside during Corona and they invited us to, to use these billboards and we wanted to like put out some messages. Um, this is not like one of the first things I did after graduation. So I'm gonna go back in time and this is like I think this is one of the first projects um, that happened and it happened because uh, yeah, we all kind of like graduated together from different fields, uh, Anita Bekpur and Lil Wackmann and me and we all um, ended up being like just not really into going directly into galleries or to, uh, to uh, maybe also not really feeling a connection to how to, yeah, how to settle yourself and how to, uh, how to navigate in this, uh, in this kind of like art uh, scene. And, um, and we were friends and we were always like uh, connecting, uh, like supporting, connecting each other in each other's work, like as you do, I guess, already when you study, you're always working together and um, help like somebody is like doing the video holding or I don't know, acting or, you know, so, um, so we thought, okay, we already did this for some time. Um, so, uh, yeah, so let's come together and do a collective out of this and try to make our own um, space somehow. Um, and it started just out of reading groups, actually, out of like, okay, we are all interested in feminism, let's 
be together, talk about feminism. We were like 15 people um, in the beginning and then it was like feminism. And as like closer we came into like, ah, intersectional feminism, racism and feminism, trans feminism and so on, like uh, more and more like it became more and more interesting for us and it, we also um, started to generate some kind of like ideas for how we can, yeah, how we can produce some works together. Um, I think one of our most kind of like yeah known works is this FCNN news, which came out of because um, we were kind of in the news <laughs> as one of our first uh, yeah room somehow because because um, we talked a lot in the press and at that time there was for example yeah it was during the Me Too movement and later also uh, Black Lives Matter and. Um, one of the first things, this is, this is all like, here it says 2017, but it's 2016 we started, 2015. Um, and we came, we, we did something, for example, that we, um, there was a professor in the art school who did a blackface and we talked about it, we wrote like an open letter and, um, and created a lot of like press and shitstorm and, and so on. And, and since then we were always like the, the artists that, um, that the press would like, uh, uh, contact if there would be any kind of like political situation and then we could always like you know that was like as if we as if like the press was our gallery somehow you know <laughs> that they were the one that connected us gave us a space and so on and it was of course like super critical um, but we we found it also like as an interesting space actually what is this like press space and and how can we um, yeah how can we reclaim it somehow and that's uh, then we were invited to do uh, to be in a residency uh, together and and actually be able to work uh, and produce some work and and then we decided okay since we like known in the press and also like in TV things and so on let's just do our own press um, and invite the people that we find important and um, and then with the idea of um, I think our our slogan our tagline was uh, making visible what has been made invisible. Um, yeah, and that was a really cute um, first project. Actually, Ahmed Ayud was also a part of it um, because we invited like different artists which we thought were interesting to show. Um, yeah, and now it's like super, it's, yeah, it's, uh, I feel nostalgic looking at this, but I think it's good to, to show awesome. like how it all started. Um, Make it louder. Yeah. Yeah, 
so the whole program, this is so just the... Uh, and welcome to FCN News. My name is Lee. And I'm Christian Music. And we're here to serve you some breaking news. News? That's breaking. So this is a, um, a clip that I found on Facebook, someone posted on Facebook, and it's about a, um, a Muslim fashion blogger. And, and Okay, so this, just to get um, a little insight of how it looks, then Christian is also doing like the shade tours. These are also super fun. All pitch, a privilege. Wait, let's <laughs> yeah, the shade tours is Dude, fun. Boy, come with me. Boy, boy, would you say your size is a handicap, a privilege, a privilege? A privilege. Boy, how does it feel to have so many people regarding you, thinking about you, being concerned with you at all times? Fascinating. Here we have Bucks. Can we say that? Well, I can see why. Well, um, is it true that true love conquers all? Man, please give your husband a chance to speak. How much did it cost to have this piano dropped on your head? Tragic and inspiring. Today, we will try to get closer, to make visible what has been made invisible. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I got a little bit lost in like wanting to watch it again because it's been a while. But you can actually see all of the episodes that we made on um, on our homepage, fcnnnews.love. Um, that's also something that's important for us to always um, have everything like available and so on. I, I just wanted to like show you a little bit more because I just remembered, I think that what is also important in this is, I mean, we do produce this ourselves and I guess this is like a, pro like a, a creative production by us somehow, as like this feminist collective, but we always also invited some artists to contribute. Um, for example, yeah, here, this is Tabitha Rezer. like a weather report from uh, Madison Boycroft and it's really nice to see because I mean um, yeah on our homepage you can also see all the people that contributed and so on and it's all also like it's cute to see because we this is like six seven years ago yeah I can't cut but yeah that we all no, no, this was all like we helped each other we did this together la 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 and so on and now everybody is like doing really interesting um, other stuff uh, and projects and so on. This is not my presentation. So you're on the left on the top left. This one, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, so that was like a super important project for me. Um, because I think all these things that you also talked about last time, um, about this um, sharing, um, resources and creating our own spaces and especially I guess like empowerment I mean this like uh, what we say in the beginning of like either you're with us or you're against us and like it, it's all like things I felt like at that time it was super important for us to to have the to, to declare that uh, and to be kind of like hey we're here and um, you have to listen to us and we're taking up the space and so on um, yeah so that was like, it's still a, it's still a project that really f uh, formed me and, um, and I'm so happy that this is the way that I entered into 
like my career or something because um, it really taught me a lot about being able to yeah to to create stuff together to work together to make my own kind of like platforms and so on um, yeah and um, the next project that we did then was I think actually it was this one for the Berlin Biennial um, <coughs> which is which was um, somehow the se like a continuation of this uh, news format, but this time we thought, okay, let's not make it. I mean, a news, but we do a kind of magazine, and the he like the topic of this magazine is um, hydrofeminism. It sounds a little bit like weird and academic and complicated, and might actually also have been um, too much. But uh, mm -hmm. the idea was, I mean, we were invited to the biennial just when the whole shit went down and Corona started and lockdowns and everything and nobody really knew, like, I mean, now we're so used to the situation, but really, in the, I think you all remember also how it was in the beginning, we were all like, what is happening? Like, what is this? Uh, what is going on and so on? And we tried to, um, to figure out, like, what's, yeah, what, what kind of situation are we in? And, and so we thought, okay, since we like, I mean, our starting point in all kinds of research is always this like, um, yeah, intersectional trans feminist um, perspective of our research somehow. Um, and then also to share research to, I mean, also FCNN or Feminist Collective came from like reading groups and um, yeah. And so we wanted to, to get an idea of like what situation, like what is going on. Um, and um, and then we figured out, ah, okay, so this pandemic, I mean, it m has also a lot to do with um, with uh, yeah with with climate crisis and our ecology, and then it went into um, racism and 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 climate crisis, how these things are connected, and um, <coughs> then we we read a text by Astrid Neimanus called um, Body no, Hydro yeah Hydro Feminism, I think. And um, and we're super inspired by that because what um, what she was talking about is that we all kind of connected um, through water, which comes from a little bit earlier when one is talking about ecofeminism, which was this like from the 70s um, idea of feminism, where where it was more about all women, like women and, and nature and women are connected to nature and so on. It's like, it's, it's beautiful, but it's from the 70s. And since then, I think we, we also like uh, made able to talk a little bit more about like what is not so much about the binary of men and women and women are like this and men are like this and so on. So it was beautiful for us to have this like um, starting point from um, to think not that women are connected to, to Earth, but that we all connected um, through water. And uh, yeah, what we did is also to again invite um, a lot of um, fellow artists um, to research this together with us. So yeah, this is the homepage we made for that project. Um, and we, we have like different seasons with different uh, contributed thing artist again with Tabitha Rezaia it's also like something that I think happened that when we when we started to build our networks we are continuously also like working again with people and um, yeah so we have for example okay I'm gonna show you some of the work that we did as a collective like Neda Dina, Neda, Anita. This is why it's called DNA. Um, me and Anita were working together also with at uh, as fe um, feminist collective, and um, yeah, I think also. I mean, feminist collective was actually also not my first collective work, but this kind of like having a group, having a collective. I feel for me, for myself, it's super important that these collectives are not like staying together for a super long time, but that they can evolve and they can kind of not yeah, end and start again and so on. And I think it's important that just to also to keep it progressive or something to, to end some things and to start some new things and then be, take up old things again. Okay, um, I'm gonna show you this first project here, the first video we did.
and in this is also sharing like the music is from uh, Nadasanai who is mainly doing music Anita is a filmmaker I'm more like from the art so this is how we kind of like navigated this collaboration Um, yeah, and then there are these other collectives and other artists and so on that we also invited to talk about, um, yeah, to talk with us about and research with us about like what this hydro capture, um, hydro feminism and, and climate crisis and pandemic and so on, all these like topics that were so present um, at that time, which they still are, obviously. Yeah. Um, Actually, I mean now, like um, what you what you just heard a little bit of, or like what what was written there was um, was our manifest, um, which we also here showed in London outside. So we wanted to have this like it's pretty big kind of like um, yeah billboard, and there were actually like some speakers, and I think I would like to play this curse. This is, um, we made then, um, this is also part of this project, which we, we made like these posters. Um, yeah, and I maybe it's nice to hear this, uh, the sound also of this manifest and how it's like it's supposed to be heard. Um, Welcome to Cars the is our very own <laughs> people. <laughs> who the world is and has been in a crisis for a very long time. Now, people in the West are talking about a so-called crisis because they are affected by something too. 
The world has ended many times for many people. People of the global majority have been in crisis for centuries. Communities have been destroyed and sucked out. The old world is collapsing and perishing. And we know this will happen to you too. We need the conversation of a crisis to reach beyond what is happening right now. And we need the conversation to continue. Crisis is here. Let's pour into it. Demand the system to crash. They will. And they will burn. We need to decolonize the way in which we talk about the climate. It is not true that the suffering of our nature is a consequence of all humanity. It is a consequence of white supremacy, patriarchy, and similar shitty superpower structures. The conversation about the climate and this planet has been occupied by white people. But we won't forget that white people created the problem to begin with. We need to redirect the conversation so it benefits us. We are all bodies of water. We are bodies of resistance. Moving, floating, freezing, drowning, growing. Love, DNA. Yes, so that was like our kind of um, manifest or like a text that we wrote together um, for this Hydro Capsules project. And it's like a collective, collective voice is collectively written and so on. Um, there have been many aspects to this project. Uh, for example, all these like research is a dirty word is like one of our slogans and um, yeah, fuck your Eurocentric worldview. Um, what else did, yeah, elitism sucks and so on, um, which all kind of like came out of different texts that we read and we thought like, okay, sometimes it's also, you can also just say something easy, <laughs> you know, it's, um, and it doesn't always have to be um, superficial or um, just because, I mean, for example, research is a dirty word, I think it's a, um, yeah, it's, it's not as like, um, it's not, it's maybe it's a one-liner, but it's kind of deep still. Um, and it's also like all these kind of things that are said and we had them like, as you can see, like blown really big and so on. Um, it's like all things that I also think is important that it's like a collective voice saying these things. Um, and I think that's also one of the main reasons why I really like to work collectively because there are things that's just so much easier to say and you have like with a feeling of, okay, we are together saying these things. If it's just me who says like, hey, fuck you, you're a centric world, you, it's like, ah, it's, you know, it needs like a, a collective voice somehow to say these things. And we realized that very early on when you want to say something political or you want to, for example, do a call out as we did with this um, blackface thing or later with a Me Too thing, thing with a, another professor, um, it's just so much, um, it's, it's, you really need actually to be in a collective to be able to cope with it because you get really attacked and, and yeah, um, it's just really tough. And I think that's also why we said in this FCNN news thing, like um, uh, we were really like insisting on, hey, listen to us and don't ridicule us and so on, because these are all like experiences that we, that we got. Um, Yay. How, how am I in time? Am I good? Okay, cool. Um, okay, like I really would like that we have this Q&A in the end though. Because, um, yeah, because <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's always my favorite part. Um, <laughs> Okay, here's like an image how it was shown in the biennial. I mean, it uh, doesn't look so interesting, I think, actually, because it was really meant to be um, an online project because we were not even like, we didn't, at that point, we didn't knew, like, is there gonna be a biennial? Like, is there gonna be like a physical thing that was talking about, or maybe we're gonna cancel it or do it the next year or something because it was really just in the beginning of the pandemic. Um, Okay, so like these are lots of my um, collective works. Here is something even earlier, which I did in How uh, Hiblam Ufa, um, which is called Speculative Bitches. 
Uh, then I also did this another dinner ruined. So uh, like this working in groups and as you can see, it's always like feminists, uh, trans feminist um, groups has always been like my, yeah, my scene somehow. And I think it's because I feel, I feel good in there. I feel like I belong there somehow and I can create something. And, um, and I think it's, I think for me, it's really important in, to be able to even to just be able to be like creative and so on, to, to feel that you have a support system and that you're not alone and that you are in spaces that you actually like. Um, I like theaters, for example, actually more than I think I like white cubes. Um, yeah. Um, so, but then as I grew older, I did a solo project, um, which was not so solo in the end anyways, because I, that it was really also like trying to center a space or create this kind of space um, in the exhibition with this um, carpet as a center where you could sit and you could be together and there were a lot also of um, events and I invited people um, yeah, to, to again kind of like research together and talk together and um, and um, yeah, this is, can I show you a nice, yeah, I think this is the, the here you can see how it was installed with this uh, carpet, printed carpet. Um, yeah, the exhibition was called No History at All, which <coughs> comes from uh, um, Aisha Ariela Azoulay's book, uh, Potential Histories. And I wanted to talk in this project about about me <laughs> and my heritage and my story. And so it made sense to me that it was like a little bit of a, of a solo project. And um, yeah, I, I think it's also which project are individual or like solo and which project are collective. I think um, it also depends a little bit on the subject. And sometimes it's nice to, to also be able to just talk about, yeah, talk, there are some subjects, for example, this, which is like, um, the story of my mother, actually, mainly. I mean, it, it, it needs a, a personal um, voice, I feel. And I think also that personal voices are, are a beautiful thing and something that I missed when I did collective works, because you, then you have this voice of like elitism sucks, like as a statement kind of thing. And here you can, in this project, I could be much more like, yeah, personal and, and um, yeah, also because I do believe in that the personal is political. Um, so I did this project with my mom and um, a lot of other people in the end contributed also to it, as you can see here. Um, I, I, I actually have, the, I have a publication where you can see like different, maybe you can like send it around or something, because there are like different um, texts and so on from, from people that I worked with. Um, uh, Maria Ines, who, who is doing the work, uh, arts of the working class, and Maria Barrios, who is um, a curator, uh, did the, she was the, one of the curators of the uh, 11th Berlin Biennial. This is my mom. Um, and, and then um, people here from the Union, which is also another like, side project I'm, I'm in, in, like, involved in, uh, which is like an actual workers' union, um, which also functions as a workers' union, but it's, it's mainly in Denmark. So it's not, I'm not so attached to it at the moment that because I'm mainly here in Berlin. But um, that was also coming out of like, okay, let's change our working conditions or we, you know, when, when we are in situations and like mainly in, uh, it's, it's focused for racialized um, artists, or cultural producers, um, as like working as a real union you can come to and negotiate uh, your wages if you have problems with like they are there and you can um, yeah you can ask for help if something racist happened during a um, exhibition or in your workspace if you're working in a cultural institution or this is like the idea of it and we are we are on the way to build this up um, so and yeah uh, this is Muni Perry who is doing FSR, is an Asian feminist research group also here based in Berlin. Um, and 
what I wanted to do in this meeting was that um, it was kind of like a collective storytelling, five minutes, okay. Um, because it wasn't like, I think that also the way, I mean, when I say like reading groups and, uh, and so on, um, it's really about, it's like I wanted to, yeah, to also stick to this like elitism sucks thing, so I'm like, I'm, I'm just gonna, show you how it was because it's not I think as you are as, as a usual like I don't know conference or something is okay Okay, um, I just wanted to like <coughs> give you a little bit of an insight of this whole kind of like storytelling and how we share stories and how we kind of like um, learn from each other and how also all this other information of like reading and, um, and so on, I feel it's like equally important also just to like sit down, and listen to each other and share and talk and, um, and yeah, this is the kind of like talks that um, yeah, that I'm into also that we sit on the floor and we like comfortable and so on. Um, 
Yeah, and this is like a part of this um, of this last ex exhibition that I had, um, where I talked about the general kind of like history, t history telling, narrating how we um, also preserve them and um, create them in in these like white institutions and so on. And it's a, it's a little bit of a of a <laughs> of a whole uh, other talk, I feel. So um, what I wanted to talk with you about now is this kind of like collective work and um, yeah and, and uh, creating together and um, making spaces and so on so Good. I'd like to have I think this one maybe in the background that's a cute picture okay <laughs> Is the question? Okay, good. Now we continue directly. Perfect. Thank you so much, Tina. Fantastic. Um, and I already see first hands raised. Is that correct? Yes. I just wanted to ask because you skipped so quickly away from your um, solo project in the end, but mm. when you were talking about that you mm. kind of wanted to pre present your own story as well. Now you talked about so many um, institutional stuff as well that you uh, mm. worked on in the exhibition, but it was uh, extremely interesting to me on how how did you do that? How did you start? To um, to yeah bring your own story into the exhibition space and yeah you skipped away from it but I would have loved to see inside of the video as well your mother speaking I don't know if you can yeah comment. yeah I mean we can watch it of course <laughs> but uh, I just felt there was not so much time um, but yeah it was also a big step for me because I yeah I've been working so much on this collective thing and I think that. Um, I, I also heard that you talked a little bit about like the upsides and downsides of collectives and so on and there is just also some, as I said, like some things that I feel really make sense to talk about collectively and other things that make sense to talk about individually and I don't think that either of them is like better or worse or something um, that the one is like more political just because it's collective, I don't think so. Like I also do think really that the personal is political as well. Um, and, um, and I always wanted to kind of um, talk about and something that I felt was really interesting was, um, was how yeah, my kind of life experience which also belongs to, uh, is a part of this feeling of belonging and not belonging and so on. Um, I'm half German and half Egyptian and, um, and I always went to, went to the museum, like the Neues Museum here in Berlin, they have a lot of Egyptian art, like I mean Europe has a lot of Egyptian art, Egypt doesn't have so much anymore and they have the pyramids obviously, but I, of course they do, but I mean it's a lot that has been looted and um, and yeah, I, I always felt there was such a weird uh, this connection of like how, how these things were presented, like in the in the public or in the yeah in these institutions as being these great cultures and really big cult like influences and big art and um, and so great and then um, and also being like taught about in the school and um, but then in the same time like you are you're like a kanaka on the street so there has been this weird feeling of how can it be that like and especially also what these institution always preach of like, yeah, but we do this so that you can get an, a cultural exchange and that we teach each other of different cultures and that we meet and so on. And I was like, it doesn't really feel <laughs> like I don't feel the, the, the effects of, of this. Uh, it mostly feels to me like um, uh, another story that goes like we had to take these really valuable things from um, from unprivileged, uh, uh, like not, uh, yeah, uh, uncivilized uh, societies, so that we can um, preserve them and and give them the right uh, place and, the, and give them a history and talk about, like you know. So it is more. It felt more like this story is being told, the story of the big white man who comes and and saves the, yeah, the the artworks um, and. I can show you a little bit of the video. It's also a very short video because it was, it was a loop. Um, this is a Neues Museum in Berlin. Yeah. 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 
I don't think there is sound on it. Oh, okay, there is. Yeah, but this is a project that is really like ongoing for me also because there's so so much, <laughs> and um, and it has also I mean one can talk about restitution and so on, but it's also about like who is telling stories, who has the voice, who's like how do we yeah I think it's also a little bit the same as like with the news you know who is like who has the urgencies and who's telling the right stories and so on and. Yeah, I think this this feeling of um, not really belonging to this one part and also not belonging to the other and so on, that's like, um, that was for me personally a, a, a reason why I did these like groups and wanted to like create something where I belong to, <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Thank you for your question opening up. Uh, but there was another hand, I think, raised. Otherwise, I throw one question in between. Uh, can I do that while? Yeah, 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 please. I just, yeah, you can just have it um, in the background. Kind of fits to the topic. Yeah. We, uh, or I often address the kind of this notion of situated knowledges, like we, uh, knowledge grows in certain contexts. It's always specific to site, location, person, etc. Uh, you just mentioned half German, half Egyptian. Uh, going to school here, but also in Denmark, there's this connection to Copenhagen. Um, how would you, like, what did you take from all, oh, echo? Mm. How did these different worlds that, that you grew up in influence your own artistic practice? Could, can, you, can, you, can you locate that in a way? Okay, from this part I took this, here I took that, that's where they merge, that's where mm. they contradict, that's where they juxtapose. Mm. Um, I think this kind of, um, I think that I like, um, I think something that I learned from being like mixed is this, um, that just because you're not German really and not something, it, it was always this like, I'm not, I'm not. And, um, and something that I, that was super important for me also coming yeah, it, to have this uh, understanding of that I'm not not something, I'm actually like twice something, <laughs> you know, and then you can, um, yeah, you can take from, from all these kind of things. And also I think that when you are, do, I mean, when with doing art and showing them and so on, of course you want to like talk with people and talk, like make it public and so on. And I, I felt that like, I've always felt so alone uh, in this situation, but then when you show these things, you also like meet other people who are, you know, and it, it means something um, that you see it, that, yeah, that you meet others and that, that you, yeah, that you kind of get visible in that way. Um, and what I took from the different, I don't know, I mean, for I am, with this last project, I am talking about how this situation, like how my situation, or how this, um, this situation of this perspective on the world and so on is in Germany, you know? I mean, I'm, I, I grew up here and I wanted to talk about like the, the Neues Museum and, and, and like the political <coughs> environment that is going on here. And I think that's, yeah, that's something that's important for me that I, I am not 
talking of like how is life in Egypt because mm. that is not my reality. Um, but um, but I know that there are a lot of half Egyptians or Egyptians or like all all other like diasporic um, lives lived here, and that that that, that is a reality. And and how about, actually, I'm always interested also in the different universities, because you went to the Danish uh, art yeah. education and the German one, the, the UDK. Yeah, yeah. I think we talked about that you were here for one and a half years as an exchange student in Berlin. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that was about 10 years ago. And you graduated only in 2016, I believe. Yeah. So six years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so how, what's the... What did you take from these two dis different systems? Mm. And I'm sorry, I'm asking this because I want to also yeah, kind yeah. of under make the students understand that education is really relative to the place that you are in. The way people teach here does not need to be the way you teach in Denmark, uh, Denmark or in Italy, or etc. That's why Ute last you know, time said, do an Erasmus, go somewhere else, just see a different way of approaching it. And I'm curious myself because I haven't been yeah, in the yeah. Danish system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, I didn't do the super creative thing. I was like coming to Germany. Like, I mean, it wasn't. I I already lived in in Denmark um, before I, I studied there. Um, but I don't know what like the big differences is actually. I think they are both like. I mean, I was a little bit too young when I studied here, so and I didn't graduate here, so I didn't have like my big kind of like. Um, critical moments or something, but um, I definitely had them in Denmark and I felt that, uh, for example, I think this has changed, but back then, like talking about racism in arts was, for example, something that was not talked about. Um, and uh, I don't know, like political stuff, it was more about like the precarious situation of an artist or something, and then it was always like, yeah, well, this is all like <laughs> rich kids and uh, does really make so much sense to me, um, and and yeah, and and um, I think I don't know how it is now and here and so on. I would love to hear how experiences are with like yeah, doing political art or organizing yourself or speaking up or trying to change things. And because um, when I studied, that was like super difficult, and I we really like uh, yeah had so much resistance, and that's why. We did this group because it was like, oh, if I do this alone, I get expelled, like I lose my friends and so on. So it was super important that we did this together. Um, and yeah, that was, was what happened in Denmark when I was, I mean, when, when I did this first call out, the, the rector of the school was uh, responding and also an open letter in the, in the, in the yeah, in the news uh, paper where she would say, um, yeah, this kind of individualistic um, interpretation of what an artwork is, is uh, leading to, uh, is the same as uh, Nazis did with Entartete Kunst, that they will judge an, an artwork and put this like political view on top of it and that follow, like stuff like this was really like, that was the rhetoric in Denmark which I was back then thinking, okay, <laughs> like in Germany, I don't think that you could go like that, uh, no. down to that yeah. low level, yeah. yeah. Um, but that was really the reality in Denmark, unfortunately. And I think it's just like even a more white country there. Yeah. More questions from you guys. And again, you know, there's no such thing as a stupid question. Yes, please. So I was wondering if you maybe know her or mm -hmm. have heard of her collective. It's called uh, Kin Collective. Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. and who is your friend? Uh, Jamila Versi. Yeah, of course. You know? Yeah, yeah, no. Oh my god, that's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love Jamila. Nice. Um, yeah, maybe yeah. a proper question as well. Um, <laughs> no, actually, fair enough. This is, the, this is the whole point. You make interconnections, networks, that's the whole point. Going, this going is on. the sound here. line here. <laughs> Please continue. I'm not moving yeah. anymore. Um, you don't have to answer this question if it's maybe a little bit too personal. But um, what is maybe some of the uh, clapback that you've experienced in Denmark while doing this uh, kind of work? 
uh, yeah, I mean, I, this situation I, to I told you about with like the blackface situation, mm -hmm. that was like tough actually, because that was really like, um, I think it was mainly also a little bit like the first time that it became such a big topic in this institution and, um, and even like also students were really like against me because this professor was, um, you know, he was one of like the cool sculpture guys, you know, so it wasn't, he wasn't like the old white man which you would already like think of that is, you know, lost case or something, but he was like this cool and everybody was friends with him and so on and then like I think, yeah, I th that was really like, okay, wow, shocking that, um, yeah, that, that people would not really like support you in this. Um, what did you say, sorry? What happened? Yeah. So what happened was that this professor, he was like doing a performance um, and it was in a zoo. Uh, in a, and, uh, and you know, <laughs> the, the zoo, especially that zoo already has like a history of, um, of showing, um, yeah, this world exhibitions of uh, humans from different cultures. And, and yeah, his, uh, his performance was called Becoming Human. He would paint himself totally black. He's a white cis man, uh, uh, no hair, like total black and total black. And then he would be inside this uh, cave and just making like sounds and so on. And I don't even know like what it was about, but that was the image he created like a me, like, you know, and the title was Becoming Human, <laughs> like, mm -hmm. there was this body in the zoo, and I just saw this, like, and I actually, like, the first time, like, I saw this performance, I wasn't, like, I didn't see it myself, but I saw it, like, through medias, and I just saw, like, how, like, kids were in front of it, and they were really afraid of it also, because it was, like, the scary kind of, situ like, s situation that he created, and I was really, like, just also, like, feeling really sad of, like, what, like, if you're a black kid and watching this, like, yeah, I don't know. And then we, we, we called it out and was like, hey, um, there is a tradition for this. It's called blackface and one should not do it. And, and if you don't know about it, then maybe you shouldn't be a professor in the first, like, you know, there's also. And then this big explanation came with like, that was not my intention, la, 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 la. So, um, so yeah, and then it was, uh, it was us who were the, the, yeah, I don't know, the bullies and, uh, and over, I think things have changed now also, but um, yeah. That was when? That was 2015. 15. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Follow up questions. Should I throw one in? And again, remember, no soup, yeah, please go. Um, how, how is your um, collective working structure, for instance, um, on the one side, I um, in general meetings, but then I wonder also how do you approach, like, or how did you approach these projects with, like, the billboards, for instance? How was, mm. how was the process of that? Mm. That was actually also my question. Really? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. More or less. Yeah, 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 yeah because um, this kind of, like, creating something collectively is, like, another thing even, because there's one thing that's, like, okay, we're a collective, we invite people, we do these kind of, like, things where, we talk together, that's like one thing, but then actually like to create things together. Um, I think that's super interesting, but um, <coughs> yeah, uh, it works on, as for example, with this Hydro Capsules homepage that I showed you, and there was, or the video with the water thing, it's like, okay, so Neda is, um, they are like a sound uh, person, so the sound came from Neda, and like the, the video or like the, sceno the scenography and so on came from Oinita and I'm into like text and graphics and so on. So like the writing and so on that was, that came from me. So it was like, and then we like mix it all kind of together. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes not. It's a lot of like negotiating and a lot, like it's a lot of work. It's, um, and, uh, and, and, and writing this text, for example, this manifest was like, okay, so we talked and talked and talked, uh, had so many like different reading groups and la la and so on. And then we were like super confused and we were okay, let's try to like get our, get a statement done. So we also understand ourselves a little bit like what we are doing. Um, and, and we would do a Google uh, document and just write collectively in it and, and then talk about it and, and in comments and so on and then like collectively write it. And 
and yeah, with the news thing, it would be everybody who has like, uh, hey, I would like to do an interview with this person and then, but together we did the scenography. But I mean, it was also not, it, the whole, all of these like collective works, I feel it wasn't so much about trying to create so much of like a visual identity or something because that was, it wasn't really about that. And it was all also things that was really thought of that maybe also with the idea <laughs> of we want not to do like individual genius art, but just, you know, do something uh, more than showing something. So, I mean, also uh, a news program uh, has been done since the beginning of art, I think. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's been done like loads of times. And writing manifest is like something, you know, it's all like talking in a long tradition of there has been like the Dyke TV programs in the US in the 60s um, who has, have done like so many artists who have done like similar things. And, um, and it's never been about that, to like create something new. It was just to create something together. I wonder if you have a project up that you, you will do for like an exhibition or something like that. Is there um, a continuous engagement, reading together in, in the collective? Or, or yeah, I think when you go into like production, it becomes more like less reading and yeah, more producing and stuff. And then everybody who is, I don't know who can, you can, you, yeah, I think that that's also something that I learned from Oinita, who's like a filmmaker who, you know, I mean, uh, when, when she's doing her, her movies, it says like director Oinita Bekpur, but like she herself was always like uh, saying that, hey, it's not, you know, I mean, when you make a film, a director is not a bigger part than the cin uh, cinematographer, for example, or, you know, like, or the person who has written the script or like all these other things. Um, it's really like working together. Everybody is having their specialities and you put it together. And it's, I mean, actually with film, it's also super absurd to be like the director has been this and that because maybe in some films, like some like more experimental films or something, but in the beginning of, of it, it was, it was always like the production company who made the films and they engaged like somebody who could direct their ideas. And it, you know, so it, yeah. So is um, the, the, um, the film reference the various players involved and mm. everybody does a part. So what's the cheat code to collaborative or collective working? Is there kind of, do you know your place in a sense of, okay, I'm not going to be a filmmaker, but I'm a great writer. So let me do that part and you do this. And then we can, like, what, what is your, mm. from these years of collective working, what's, what's your cheat code you can share? Mm, I have been writing like the text where like that's kind of like research and writing and so on. This is like mo mostly mine and um, and then, yeah, I, and, and doing like a little bit of the visual identity or something. I think like, for example, I did a project with the uh, Ebru here who was also in the video and so on, um, where I was like a creative director. I think sometimes it's like, maybe that's also like a nice role, like title. Maybe of. more my question was, um, what's um, your trick of working together in a collective? in this collaborative process, because we talked about it also in Ute's uh, speech that yes, there's limits to it. Sometimes you have to put more energy in it than you get out of it. Hmm. So after all these years now, um, what's, what's your biggest lesson that you can share? Like how ah, to, how okay, to okay, sustain okay. a collective, yeah, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First, like not to sustain a collective is also okay. Yeah. <laughs> so it's okay to finish it. It's okay to pause it and so on and to move on and do other things. Um, and and then to I don't I think something there is so much conflict things going on always of course when you're working together and it's so important to maybe from the beginning to be uh, to have um, to level the the expectations you know I mean there's always I think this is maybe also when bands or something they break up because some really want to become super famous other wants to just do it in the weekends and I don't know so it's like this level of um, yeah expectations of like so what do we want to do with this um, I think that's uh, that's something that's always something that I learned okay when I start a new project we need to from the beginning know what is it like where do we want to kind of yeah, what are our passions in this? And it's, I think it's important to have the same, that we all, in, in order that it actually is collective, that we all like share the same 
um, expectations and, and times and, and so on and into it. But yeah. Yeah. Question from you. Yes, please. Um, I would like to feel like you're like a politician with like really good vision, vision video material and like having this manifest and yeah, making a video to that which is very on come to the point. Um, everything, well, I want my, my question is do you think there can be art which is not political? Hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, I, I think so. And uh, I, yeah, I think. Yeah, I mean, one can. This is this like all art is political or something. But I think like uh, what is. Yeah, what is actually something when I studied here and uh, something that I really remember Tito telling me it was like um, political art is not what it shows but what it does. And I feel like this has become such a, like, this is really something I always like remind myself of that it's not, you know, that it's not about, for example, I don't think that a, a film can be a political film if there has been so much like Me Too shit in the background and it's all like a man who's, uh, a white man who is uh, holding the camera and filming everything and you know like the structure behind it and so on so there for example I feel no it's not it's not really political just because it shows a political theme um, I feel that like it becomes things become political if you are yeah from like how they are cre like what what is all around it like who created it um, where is it like who who has yeah who is speaking more than like what is being said and and it's difficult to say like if there is something that is not political I don't know do you think so as you said like this politics in the end is the relation between all of us kind of and there's always a relation so yeah in the end it's always political in a way maybe more or less relevant politically. I mean, I guess there's tons of relations which have certain structures which are just not so interesting for our societal discourse, maybe, and just, yeah, they are not, yeah, there's no focus. So maybe it's about relevance mm. of politics. Mm. Yep. But kind I, for example, it. also a lot of time feel like our oh, political art and then you really have in your mind like it looks like something like I do because I think like or like the FCNN, for example, is like, OK, that's is political. Obviously, it's like news. But um, I absolutely think that like uh, paintings and sculptures and like other forms can is like super like the way they are created and why you're doing this and all these things is like there's so much you can say, yeah, you can say it in so many different ways and doesn't always have to be so, like, uh, yeah. Maybe we jump to another question quickly and then we follow up later, yes? Um, do you find it uh, hard to kind of um, create the art and at the same time portray this message that you're trying to bring across? Like, does the fact that you're trying to communicate a specific message um, complicate the process of creating art that is enjoyable? Mm. Mm. I think that it's like super important that you <coughs> that it's enjoyable to do to to produce these things. I think that's, for example, also political and. Um, yeah, for example, with this with this work that I've done alone, um, I, I I just invited like all the people that I like to work with and I like to be with, and um, and yeah, did that, did it together with them. I don't think I'm not so sure if I totally understand. <laughs> um, what I mean is like like um, like for example, with the new Kendrick Lamar album, mm -hmm. like he 
he portrays a message that's kind of like very like emotionally hard. Like mm -hmm. you listen to it and you're like, a lot of people talk about it, they listen to it and we're very like triggered and like mm -hmm. driven to tears. And so a lot of people also feel like that's the reason why it doesn't really have hits or it doesn't really have like this same energy that his last album did because he is focusing more on the message and mm. when the message is so like um, uh, com like uh, contra controversial or maybe like uh, mm. a little bit mm. then it becomes harder to and that's why I was asking you if you if, mm. if it for you becomes harder to maybe like make it accessible mm. or um, easy for people of all walks of life to consume mm. when you have to, when you're trying to um, portray a certain message. Mm. Mm. I mean, the conflict of yeah. aesthetics in a way and message as well, yeah. no? Like, um, yeah. is it something that's pleasing to the eye and it works or is it mm. more the message? Can there be a conflict with political art? Yeah, that's super nice. I like what, like, it's nice with the Kendrick Lama. And, uh, yeah, it's true, I guess. Um, I really enjoy aesthetics. Like, I, I think also like to, I think that's, I don't, I mean, it's already, a f I don't know, it's like already like for me a little bit of a feminist thing where I, where I feel like, okay, do we still have the idea of the looks of a feminist who is uh, saying no to, to anything that looks feminine and just doesn't want to, you know? And, and then I'm like, it's maybe it works for me in the same way with, the, with aesthetics in, in like my art things that I don't think it needs to be boring in order to be like, did I, like political or something and that I think it's like an, uh, a very specific aesthetics from like I don't know like second wave of feminism and, and the 90s and like institutional critique kind of like you know it's, it's a it's an aesthetic that belongs to to this mm. yeah the art fields or something and, and I think we have moved a little bit further and and can also be okay with like combining pop elements and and like colors and and not so much text or you know and into like things that can still be political um, I really like always to think about for example also with the slogans and so like with these like easy slogans that like I mean you can say you can talk about restitution and you can like don't know read a bunch of really like big books about it but you can also just say bitch better have my money and it also kind of says the same and yeah. Nice. Okay, uh, last chance for a last question from you guys. Uh, otherwise, we come to our famous last question. It's also, I don't know if you're as sweaty as I am, but I'm still dripping. Please, last question for you. Was it also a reason why you have done this collective, also the other people? Because you feel far more powerful together? Or I don't know if you worked alone before, but maybe you, you tried other things? Yeah, totally. Yeah, when I studied, I feel like when you study, you get so much, especially when you have to do like the last, uh, you know, the, the master Arbeit thing. Um, I think here it's a little bit cooler, but in um, because it's like uh, the Royal Academy and so on, and they have this huge exhibition thing and like in this big halls and so on. Out, like in an ex actual exhibition space and so on. So it was really about like the last years, it was really like to try to create this individual artist who can create like an artwork for this huge gallery spaces somehow. Um, and yeah, I did totally like fall into that at some point. And I was also like trying out with like, I don't know, putting a stone in a corner with a little thing on top and I don't know, and being like, I don't know what to say about it, I dreamt about it, or you know, and then, <laughs> but um, I didn't, yeah, and then when I started to like, um, I think I became political because of, for example, yeah, because of this thing that happened with the blackface, actually, and because I talked out about it, and then I felt like, hey, I need people. <laughs> 
who can have my back and we can talk about this together. And yeah. Yeah. Okay, then this is my final question. It's always the same. Um, so we have a lot of becoming actors and architects and uh, artists and designers here in the room. Um, what's um, a piece of advice that you could give all of them? <laughs> um, I actually I have this as like uh, I have that as a part of my in my carpet I have like um, what is the best advice that has ever been given to because you all, yeah you said this in uh, in the Soho house thing yes this is the same question yes. I don't know like I think it's a it's a very beautiful question um, and I answer it in this one and I think it's like for me personally is to I think especially with like these political things and so it's to be a little bit patient even though it doesn't sound very revolutionary <laughs> but um, yeah but seriously it's like a lot of times you get so much I think that like you get shit uh, because I mean this is obvious when you do when you do speak up against something there is a reason why you speak up against something because there's something wrong and the situation has not changed yet, you know, and then you get, like, you get what you speak against, like, you get this against. And um, I think what is, what is, for example, what has been super nice for me with this blackface situation is that, like, first, like, the rector was totally expelling me from the whole school things and I was really, like, an outsider and so on, and then, like, Four years later, I'm invited to teach at the academy about racism and arts. So that was like, yeah, that was a really nice one to, to learn when you're kind of like trusting a little bit in yourself and being like, okay, I know this is right, even though in this moment it doesn't, you know, you get so much shit. So mm. still don't <laughs> give up. Thank you. So warm applause <laughs> to you, Dina. Thank you so much. Thank you for our amazing student generale team for making this all happening and thank you for all being here despite the fact that it's incredibly hot and very warm. We see each other, we have only two sessions left by the way guys, that's a quick semester in two weeks, actually with a friend of um, both of you, uh, Maisa Lihadeb, um, who is a media theorist, an artist and a filmmaker and she will be one second, almost done. Uh, and she will be here in two weeks from now, and I hope to see you here again. But again, a warm applause for everyone. It's been beautiful. Mm -hmm. Stay safe and welcome to the crisis. Yay. <laughs>